Hi, I'm the History Guy. I have a degree in history. I love history. If you love history too, this is the channel for you. If you're interested enough in history to be watching The History Guy, then my guess is you've probably heard of the sinking of the Titanic. What you might not know is that the Titanic disaster was not the worst maritime disaster in American history. That actually occurred on the Mississippi River. And while the story of the explosion aboard the steamboat Sultana is interesting, what is maybe even more interesting is the reason that you may never have heard of it. And so today, we are going to remember the Sultana and her victims. The Sultana was a 260-foot wooden side-wheeled steam transport built by the John Lithoberry Shipyard in Cincinnati in 1862. Registering 1,719 tons, she was intended for the lower Mississippi cotton trade and for two years ran a regular route between St. Louis and New Orleans. With a regular crew of 85 and room for 376 passengers and cargo, she was frequently commissioned to, to transport Union troops during the war. In April of 1865, the Sultana was in Vicksburg, Mississippi, when its captain, J. Cass Mason, was approached by Lieutenant Colonel Reuben Hatch, the chief quartermaster of Vicksburg. Hatch had a deal for Mason. Thousands of federal prisoners who had been held at Confederate prisoner of war camps in Alabama and Georgia had been paroled and had been brought to Vicksburg. The U.S. government offered to pay $5 per enlisted man and $10 per officer to any riverboat captain who was willing to take the paroled prisoners north. Hatch offered to promise Mason a full load of 1,400 prisoners if Mason would pay Hatch a kickback. Anxious for the windfall, Mason agreed to the bribe. While the prisoners were brought to the town of Vicksburg, the Sultana finished her run to New Orleans and then sped back to Vicksburg. But on the way, one of her boilers sprung a leak. Anxious that a lengthy repair could cost him this valuable commission, Mason settled for a temporary repair. Although Hatch had promised 1,400 paroled prisoners, a paperwork error led the Union officer in charge to load the entire group. 2,100 paroled prisoners on the Sultana, a ship built to accommodate 376 passengers. Significantly overcrowded, the Sultana left Vicksburg on April 24th, 1865. The Mississippi spring floods that year were the worst in history, and Sultana's boilers struggled to push the overcrowded boat up against the spring flood. Near 2 a.m. on April 27th, 1865, seven miles north of Memphis, Tennessee, three of Sultana's boilers exploded. The explosion tore apart the boat. Men were thrown into the river. The forward part of the upper decks collapsed into the exposed furnace boxes and set the boat ablaze. Men jumped into the river to avoid the flames, but weakened from their time in the prison camps, they couldn't fight the current and drowned. A southbound steamer, the Bostonian II, arrived on scene about 3 a.m., an hour after the explosion, and rescued many survivors. Other survivors called for help as they floated by the docks in Memphis and were pulled from the water by people there. Given the location of the tragedy, ironically, many of the survivors were actually saved by former Confederate soldiers. In the end, about 700 people were pulled alive from the water, but about 200 of those died later from burns and exposure. Captain Mason and most of the officers of the Sultana also perished. In the end, the death toll was over 1,700, nearly 200 more than Titanic. The explosion aboard Sultana killed nearly as many Union troops as the Battle of Shiloh. And in addition, several women and children who were also on board also perished. There is some controversy as to the cause of the explosion. The official report blamed a combination of the boat being overcrowded, steaming against the swollen river, poorly managed boilers, and the temporary boiler repair. Water sloshing between the boilers had created a surge in pressure that exploded the boilers. It all could have been avoided had the water level in the boilers been kept higher. A second theory is that the Sultana was destroyed by an act of sabotage, the victim of something called a coal torpedo, a special bomb desired to look like coal and go into the boilers. A known Confederate agent was said to have made a deathbed confession to blowing up the Sultana. 
While the Confederates were known to have destroyed several riverboats using these sorts of coal torpedoes, others argued that the dynamics of the explosion aboard the Sultana indicate a boiler accident. What should be more controversial is that no one was ever held accountable for the disaster. The Union officer who sent the 2,100 prisoners from the parolee camp was originally court-martialed for overloading the boat, but the court-martial was overturned when they found out that he had been in the camp all day and didn't actually load anyone on the boat. The captain who did load the men on the boat was a West Point graduate and a regular Army officer, and the Army was loath to try him. Captain Mason told him that the boat was overcrowded, but not overloaded, and insisted that he had carried this many people on the boat before. Colonel Hatch, who hatched the entire scheme to begin with, was politically connected. He avoided responsibility by immediately resigning his commission and thus was no longer accountable to a military review board. The Sultana was loaded with 2,100 prisoners, seven times the number of people that she was designed to carry, and not one person was ever held accountable for that mistake. Sultana survivors held reunions all the way up until 1936, when the last survivor finally died 71 years after the Sultana sunk. There are several memorials and markers throughout the country to commemorate the deaths aboard the Sultana, but if you've never heard of it, don't be surprised. Even people in 1865 barely heard of it. You have to understand what was going on in April of 1865. On April 9th, Robert E. Lee surrendered at Appomattox Courthouse. Five days later, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. On April 26th, the day before the Sultana disaster, John Wilkes Booth, the assassin, was caught and killed. And that same day, General Joseph Johnston surrendered the last large Confederate army. In the horrors of the war, the people of America barely noticed another 1,700 deaths. It barely made the back page of the newspaper. These were men who signed up to fight for their country. They underwent the horrors of war, endured the unspeakable horrors of the prisoner of war camps, and right as they had found freedom, they died horribly, burned to death or frozen to death, victims of greed and incompetence, and they were barely even noticed in their time because they weren't even the biggest news of the day. And that's why it's up to us to remember the victims of the explosion aboard the Sultana. I'm the History Guy. I hope you enjoyed this edition of my series, Five Minutes of History, short snippets of forgotten history, five to 10 minutes long. If you did enjoy it, then go ahead and click that like button on the left. If you have any questions or comments, write them in the comment section and I would be happy to respond. And if you want five minutes more, then click the subscribe button on your right.